Today, I'm going to be reviewing how to calculate uncertainty in the slope of a graph. You should be starting on the page of the packet that has the same title. It starts off talking about theory, tells us the distance, height, excuse me, an object free falls is related to gravity, little g, and the time squared as h equals one half g times t squared. So you see right away we're starting off with the theory. Don't worry about how it is that they graphed height against time squared. We're going to cover that in the next video on linearization. For right now, know that the format looks like the following. H equals one half g times t squared. And what this can look like, what we can replace this as, is y equals m times x. This is from our sloped intercept form. All right, obviously, the intercept here is equal to 0. But we correlate the height to the y, OK? 1 half g, that whole thing is the slope. And t squared, that whole thing is x. All right, we can do that. When you plot that data, height against time squared, you end up with those data points as they look like there. I'm going to recreate the graph here for you. The important thing here to notice is move this around here. All right. Uh, the important thing to notice is that with all these data points, okay, we only care about the first and last when we're working with creating the slope, the minimum possible slope and the maximum possible slope. So what, what does this mean exactly? Well, let me create these error bars here. I'm going right here, right here. This is approximately close to what uh, the graph looks like on your sheet. All right. So the line of best thing, again, what I told you before is just try to approximate the relationship that the data is uh, presenting to you. Okay, and you can just draw the line. It's kind of arbitrary. You don't have to make it go through all the data points at all. Okay, but something like that. You know, and I might even move this up here a little bit. Um, if I had a ruler, I might have been more precise with that. Yeah, that would do. That's fine. Okay. Um, so. From here, okay, because we have error bars, whatever slope we determine for this relationship, that slope is also going to have an uncertainty, okay? So how do we determine what that uncertainty is? Well, we gotta use the error bars to figure out what the maximum or steepest possible slope could be and what the uh, most shallow, I guess you could say, slope could also be in here, at least steep. Uh, if we take these error bars, we're gonna use the first and last set, we're gonna create um, the steepest possible line and the least steep possible line. In order to do that, I'm going to use, for the maximum slope, we'll use red here. Okay, circle, which two points can we connect? I'm going to connect this point and this point. That would be the maximum or steepest possible slope uh, if I would create any sort of line between from these error bars. And I'm purposely connecting these error bars. Okay? So there you go, all right? That's going to be your max slope. And your min, all right, I'm going to go with green here, circle all those points. I'm going to draw it here, OK? You can see this, and you can probably read it on your own, but I'm just, whoops, just want to review it, all right, make sure that you understand this, OK? So there we go, all right? We have our line of best fit. I'm going to label that as m best. The reason I use m is to indicate that we are looking for the slope from it. Okay, and max is, well, I'll label it over here because that's the easiest way to determine which is which, right? And up here, and min. All right? And that is it. That is how we generate those um, lines, okay? Now, this is for horizontal error bars. If we had vertical error bars, uh, we'd be using the top of the rightmost point to the bottom of the leftmost point, okay? Uh, for the maximum slope, and the bottom of the rightmost point, okay, uh, the highest independent uh, variable value, all right, if it's a positive relationship. 
to the top of the leftmost point again. All right, uh, I'll be doing an example of that in a little bit. So you can read there how they calculate the slope and the minimum and maximum, how they report it. The important thing about reporting your slope down is that you find your slope from your line of best fit, and it's going to be plus or minus the difference of the maximum and minimum slope. Again, you have to choose points on all of these lines when you're calculating slopes. The difference between those two divided by two, that gives you an approximate plus or minus, because sometimes the max is much more and a bit less or something like that. But that it kind of gives you almost like a little bit of an average there, okay, of how much it might be plus or minus. Um, if you follow the math there, given uh, for this example, you get g is equal to 9.8 plus or minus 0.8 meters per second squared. All right, you can follow the math that they did there. All right, I want to do an example. This example is on the next page. It, the, it, the, that page is titled Uncertainties in Data Graphic Class Work. All right, and I'm just going to take you through what I would do, and hopefully you can follow along. Uh, the first thing I would do anytime we're creating a graph here in IB physics is we're going to label our creative axes, and then we're going to label them, of course, and label our graph. All right, it's very important. Notice that I use the entire graphing area when I create this graph. All right, that's also very important. So we have distance, the displacement here is going to be an S. That would be in meters, okay, in time, all right, in seconds here. And let's see here, I need to divide my, uh, scale my axes here, all right, uh, appropriately to what my data is. So my time goes from 0.8 to 4.6 seconds. And so I guess what I want to do is I want to go up to 5 and divide that nicely. And I'm going to count how many squares here I got here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Beautiful. I couldn't ask for that to be any nicer. All right. I was lucky. So, yeah, there we go. One, two, three, four, and five seconds. And then the vertical axis, I'm going to have to break up uh, something pretty much approximately the same there. I'm just going to go ahead and guess, and I'm sure that'll be fine here, actually, just by looking at it, I think that will be. If not, I'm always erasing and try again, right? So this would be 0 0.5 meters, this would be 1.0 meters, right there. Smoke was not perfectly calibrated, 1.5, and over here to 2. Perfect. All right. So, there we go, create my scales. Now, what I need to do is I need to plot my points, okay? Um, that's the first thing we got to do. Oh, also, if you want, we can uh, create a title here, distance. Always the dependent variable versus the independent variable of time. Okay. I'm going to plot these points. I'm just going to plot them as dots. All right. So first one is 0.802 and 0.3. So that will be approximately there. And again, right now I'm not going to be exactly perfect. You can follow along. Hopefully right now on the other side you are plotting this data. Okay. As you plot this data, I also want you to take a look at what the... So 1.1, let me do this here. Can do too many things at once. All right, there we go. There's another data point. 2.1 and 1. All right, that's about there. Okay. And 1.6 and 3.6. So over here. And 1.6 so be right there. Yep, yep. Okay, I hope that's about right. And let's see, 4.6. And two, let's see, two, go over here. Okay. 4.6, oops, that one's definitely not right. Yeah, I think I missed it, didn't I? Yep, there we go. Where's that guy? Good. Okay, so I got my five data points all flying approximately. I think that they're right. Uh, what you need to do now is add error bars, okay? Um, now, you don't have to add all error bars. You should only add the ones that are the most significant. And what I mean by that is the ones that have the largest relative size. <coughs> now, the reason for that is that sometimes error bars are so small, you can't draw them. And also, the largest error bars are the ones that we care about. They're the ones that are going to cause the greatest variance in the slope when you calculate it. So if you just generate uh, these error bars for this graph, I would use the distance ones. Uh, they are going to be the largest. Uh, the time ones, I don't think I could even draw. 
uh, they were so small. So let's see here. We've got plus or minus 0.1 pretty much, right? And what you're end up drawing here, I feel like Bob Ross, they look like little tie fighters, don't they? Nice little guys, right? Eh? No, they've done it with Bob Ross, so don't worry. Do it with the giant afro and does the paintings and such stuff. Pretty nice little trees. I don't know, character, something. Strange guy. Yeah, there we go. There we go, and one more exit of error bars. So yeah, now we've got the five TIE Fighters, good, okay. So, now, what I want to do is I want to create my line of best fit. Remember what I said about your line of best fit, you want to make sure that it goes through the air bars and then it passes through the y-axis if you can make that happen, okay? I'm going to approximate this relationship here. I think it's going to look something like this. Yeah, okay, there we go. Yep, I'm happy with that, okay. And uh, then you got to create your min and max. So remember, your max, right, is, is the first one we create is from the top of this right most point here to the bottom of the leftmost point. Okay, that's going to create the steepest possible slope. Your min is then going to go from the top to the bottom of your rightmost point over here, right, to the top here, okay? Now, when you're calculating these slopes, it is absolutely okay to use those exact points for your max and min, the points uh, where the air bars are at, okay, when you calculate the slopes. For the line of best fit, though, you're going to want to pick a couple of points, all right? Um, whatever points you find on the graph, you know, if it intersects a grid line, that's pretty much a good point to choose. Um, again, it is approximate, and so if your answer is off uh, within a certain range, that's perfectly acceptable, right? So I'm going to quickly pause and then do some calculations, and you're going to see some calculations pop up on the screen and, uh, when I start this again. And we're back. Bam. So all these numbers here, okay, I got uh, from the graph from the data. Let me explain what I mean. What we have right here for the best, uh, the line of best fit, I chose two points. Let me go back to the graph here. Two points I have in green, all right? Um, the one up here, and there's another one down here, all right? Hopefully you see them. Uh, I figured the line of best fit went through those uh, grid lines, so I used those points, all right? And uh, I chose them here, did the work. Uh, if at any time right now, my suggestion would be to pause this if you want to write this, these numbers down. That's the good thing about this. You can pause me uh, anytime you get tired of listening to me and come back to me later. So uh, you get the slope for the line that's fit 0.425 meters per second. Um, for the min and max, I literally just used the values I calculated from where uh, they would be with the error bars, OK? So uh, for the minimum possible slope, uh, the time is 4.61 seconds and 0.802 seconds since I'm using the first and last data points. But I'm using 1.9 because that's the uh, that uh, second value minus the uncertainty, and 0.4 because it's the, uh, the very first value minus uh, or adding the uncertainty to it. And that gives me the smallest possible value for the slope at 0.394 meters per second. Do the same thing. Use the same two times, but use the maximum possible values. Uh, give me the maximum possible uh, slope, um, adding the uncertainty to the second value and subtracting from the first to get that 2.1.2 meters. Right? When I do that, this is my, uh, these are the three values I want to use Okay, when I end up reporting my slope. The final answer will look something like this. It'll be 0 0.42, whatever I had on the previous uh, slide, I'm going to go back to it. Uh, 0.425, the slope, right, uh, and best plus or minus and max, minus and min, all over 2. This business is going to be 0 0.425 plus or minus that 0 0.499 minus 0 0.394 all over two, okay? Uh, when I report this, remember we gotta have one uncertainty, one sig fig, excuse me, in the uncertainty, all right? So this is plus or minus 0 0.0525, and this is all meters per second, or per units, okay? So what we need to do is we need to report it to the nearest hundreds place, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of rounding here, 
and this will be 0 0.43 plus or minus 0 0.05 meters per second. It is acceptable if you are at 0 0.40 based on whatever you might have calculated when drawing your slopes. Remember to draw these slopes with a straight edge, okay? Um, your uncertainty, hopefully, is the same as mine, though. It should be, uh, because we're using the actual values from the data. All right? And that is it. That is how you graph with error bars.